by Cecil Francis Alexander. It's quite inspirational and a very good reference for our conversation. Now, the hymn reminds us of a world where, and I quote, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Of course, I'm sure you remember that song. Well, I'm not much of a celebrated singer, uh, but um, I'm quite um, sure that this resonates with so many of us, especially those who attended Christian missionary schools in their formative years. Now, the point, however, is that this world considered the most perfect of all God's creation came into being by just the spoken words of mouth. And as someone noted, this makes God the first, though divine, journalist of all times. Now, the profundity of this message is also captured in the write-up of an inquirer into why credible journalism matters. And I'm quoting now, with words, the journalist can nurture love, and with words, he can also instigate the worst and most malignant forms of fanaticism and hatred. And with words, the journalist can make heroes out of villains." Unquote. But everything is changing, and our world has been affected in almost every spectrum by globalization and advancement in technology. The media space is now fragmented by digitization and the use or application of digital technology in almost all spheres. Today, traditional media, the TV, radio, and the prints, no longer enjoy the monopoly of the media space. Internet social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Instagram, Wikipedia, not compel competition. The audience can also now choose to subscribe to the platform that suits his or her prejudices. This development engenders a need for greater professionalism. Fake news or misinformation, hate speech, and abuse of professional integrity have exposed journalism profession to severe attacks. Many have been arrested, killed, or humiliated in the courts of holding governments accountable to the people. And the media landscape in Africa is replete with tales of suppression of freedom of the press. But there have also been abuses, misuse of the emerging media platforms, and professional integrity. The question therefore arises, is journalism, as the fourth estate of the realm, still performing its role as watchdog of the society, or is it to be watched itself? Now it is for these and more concerns that have drawn the historic gathering of over 300 journalists from over 40 countries around the world in Abuja, Nigeria. This June, under the auspices of the International Press Institute World Congress, IPI. On late edition this week, we discussed the fragmentation of the media space and why good journalism matters. I am Claire Adilabu Abdul Rusak. Barbara Trionfi, I hope I got that correct, is the Executive Director, International Press Institute, IPI. She has an international relations background. She's not just passionate about press freedom. She's indeed an advocate and practitioner of whatever she believes in. She's been called here as an Our Lady for Press Freedom. She's a linguist and speaks different languages, five I can count of course, including the Chinese language. But don't be surprised if she also picks a word or two of her local dialects, Yoruba, Hausa, or Igbo. Anyway, Wale Kukboluyi is of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta. He's a member, International Public Relations Association in the UK. He's also a Chartered Institute of uh, Public Relations member, also in the UK. International Bar Association UK and fellow Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. He has over 300 publications in academic and professional journals to his credit. Join me as I welcome my two distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on Late Edition. Thank you. 
All right, let's start a conversation. Fragmentation of the media space. How would you, and I'd like to start from home, if, if you don't mind, Barbara, how would you, Mr. Kukulu, you describe or evaluate the, you know, practice and practitioners of journalism profession, you know, want to begin with the conduct, of course, uh, you know, within the Nigerian media space? Thank you very much. Um, it's, um, um, it's a mixed blend of um, the good and uh, not very good, I won't say bad, uh, because um, the journalist is working in an environment that uh, he has no control over. So there are a lot of factors that influence his conduct and his behavior and uh, professional practice too. So um, we have to address that within a particular context. So but generally speaking, it's a mixture of uh, the, the very good and the good, uh, depending on the, the environment the journalist finds himself or herself. Mm. Do, do, do you have any memorable experience, you know, to, to share with us, maybe from both ends, the good and the bad? Well, um, an average journalist is uh, trained and uh, has a passion to do the work. And uh, he goes out to gather the news, writes the news, sends in the news, and um, we've seen a lot of uh, journalists performing their role uh, as an agent of change in the society. And a lot of um, uh, successes have been recorded in line with what journalism uh, is expected to be. Uh, the primary functions, our traditional functions, which is to inform, educate, and entertain. And, and some other functions too, secondary functions, and constitutional role too, because the 1999 constitution as amended uh, under the section 22, specifically enjoys the media okay, to play uh, a specific role in the country. So the media should hold government accountable and so on and so forth. So have, you, have, you had, have you had a personal experience? Because you've written over 300 publications in the, in the course of doing this job. Have you had any experience whatsoever? Yeah. Um, apart from uh, being a journalist over some time, I also write for several newspapers. I'm a columnist and uh, public affairs analyst. So, um, at times when I write, I can see changes. Uh, some organizations do get in touch with me to say, oh, we saw this. How do you think things can uh, improve on? Um, and uh, yeah, that is developmental journalism. But, but uh, sorry, please. on the other hand, I've written some um, many articles and uh, reviews and so on and so on and I've received a series of uh, threats. And knocks? Yeah. There was a particular one, uh, maybe that was the most scary. Uh, it was not written in English. And uh, I had to meet one of my friends to interpret for me. And the person said uh, I was being abused and uh, saying all sorts of things against because I was thinking that a policy that was being uh, muted to be uh, uh, put in place was not too good enough, that it was too hasty, that a lot of um, preliminary uh, exercise should have been done to elicit that. But some people just felt uncomfortable okay, with that. We've yeah, so and so you, you've had a feel of both ends. Yeah. yeah okay, let yeah. me bring in uh, Barbara. Barbara, what, what experience, uh, you know, of course, uh, you, you've been round, you know, from the global perspective. How, how do you evaluate, you know, the practice? I, I, I agree very much with what my colleague said. I think that around the world is very similar to how the landscape in Nigeria is. You have the 
exceptionally good journalism. You have the journalism that can bring about positive change in society. There you have the journalism that, that, that can um, talk about uh, what the people in power are doing right and wrong, what, uh, you know, all of that can really hold our government accountable. And you have poor journalism, journalism that is not very well researched, and you have propaganda. And all of that falls under the roof of what the people in general define as journalism. So it's, it's very, and that's why at the IPI World Congress we stress quality journalism, we stress independent journalism, which is very different from what is propaganda, which is very different from what news organizations like maybe CCTV or uh, uh, Press TV or uh, this type of news organization would be uh, the, the information that they distribute. Mm. You, you, you talk about propaganda and of course uh, real journalism. That takes me to my next question. Traditional media you know, used to be strictly guided mm -hmm. by of course the ethics of the profession of precisely you know, facts finding. You, you, you must uh, verify you know, your stories, you must you know, back your stories with of course uh, facts. Is that eroding today? I, I don't know what we define as traditional media anymore. Um, I don't think it is eroding. I think that we still see incredible examples of very good journalism around the world. And as I said, and there is bad journalism, and that has always been around. Um, you know, I believe in progress. I believe that the world is getting better, that we are learning, and I do believe that also journalism is getting better with the type of journalism that we have seen in recent months and years produced by you know the new york times uh, the guardian in the uk the washington post just to mention a few that may be uh, more familiar to uh, nigerian audiences and others uh, is exceptionally good um, poorly researched journalism has always uh, been around and uh, you know we, we need to be able to teach our audiences to understand which one has a value for them and which one is not. And it's, I believe very much that it is a function also of quality media, possibly even of public and state media, to help audiences understand how can they discern quality journalism, quality information from what is either poorly re researched, what is terribly biased, and what is purely propaganda. Okay, uh, Mr. Adewale, I, I remember growing up, I, I didn't used to hear so much talk about, you know, or distinction about good journalism, bad journalism, uh, because practitioners at that time, you know, were very thorough in, you know, digging deep, you know, for, for, for stories. But that is not the case today. Today, we have needs, you know, the professional integrity has been questioned. To you, see a nexus between what is happening right now and digitization and the application of it? Yeah, um, yeah, partly. Uh, the traditional media, as uh, we have uh, mentioned, um, is still being regulated. Uh, the print media, uh, the electronic media, radio and television, we still have institutions that monitor what they do and if they run foul of the law they can still be sanctioned but uh, unfortunately we don't have that control when it comes to the social media and unfortunately the social media is taking more of the space than the traditional media is faster people have access to that and so on and so forth so um to a large extent, I would say that uh, that is a problem. That is digitization uh, has made it possible for the media to be penetrated without much control. Then, talking about the journalists now, um, there are two, where I'm talking more of within the Nigerian context, um, there are two important things that I think they've uh, affected the profession uh, negatively. One, there is general moral decadence. And that uh, moral decadence cuts across the entire sector of the economy. 
and um, in the olden days that you refer to value systems people uphold value system very well so people don't want to be corrupt people don't want to find themselves doing things that are you know uh, against the norms societal norms but nowadays people do things with impunity so that's a big problem and that's why you have uh, some professionals not only journalists now compromising their ethical standards because of moral values and secondly the economy the economy may not be too good for the journalists um, that's not an excuse for anybody to compromise his or her professional ethics but many journalists are poorly paid and in the course of doing their work there is the temptation of being uh, uh, of being induced so that, that 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 makes it difficult for somebody who is poorly paid who has bills to settle who is also contending with moral issues in the society so these are issues that affect good journalism apart from the influx of uh, digitalization yes i i'd like to bring Bra Bra barbara you know he's talked about moral decadence and of mm. course the issue of uh, remuneration wages and, and all that but those are factors that have been with us even you know before now before the uh, digitization you know of the media space and all that do you agree with him to, to to what extent do you agree with him that those are also factors that have impeded on you know the quality of our profession I certainly, um, I wouldn't go as far as assessing uh, moral issues, but certainly uh, the issue of wages is a big one. And as you say, it has been around for some time. With the crisis in the media industry around the world, this has become increasingly, if you want, a problem. The fact that journalists are not paid enough. Um, and, and therefore, they, they need, unfortunately, to look for other sources of income, legitimate or not, which may influence in different ways the, 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 the independence of their coverage. So that is an issue that needs to be discussed, needs to be addressed. Um, and actually, one of the panels at the IPI World Congress here was exactly looking into solutions uh, for the fact that journalists are under either underpaid or very, very often not paid at all. Um, so this is uh, certainly a problem. Looking at the digitalization, I think that, you know, social media are not news media. Social media are nothing else than platforms for content. And it is very true that have become the reference number one for a lot of people, a lot of young people. Um, and most of the content, a lot of the content that is available on social media is content that is not journalism, is not what I would define as journalism, certainly not what I would define as quality journalism. It's opinions, uh, facts, what are commonly called fake news or just fa fake facts. Um, so again, I think social media is a very new reality. Uh, we are talking a lot about it, we are looking for solutions, is complex, so uh, it will take time for us to identify what the solution is. We need to work with social media companies, uh, which are, you know, are companies that are not news organizations, these are companies interested in business profit, so it takes time to work with them and lead them toward a business model that favors quality information over information that may be bring more money to them. So I think, again, um, it is a problem today. And I think that we need to go through a process in order to ensure that the information that is delivered to the audiences through social media can serve the purposes that used to be served by traditional journalism. Uh, Adewale, Barbara has just said something that um, Social media is not journalism, you know, in her, from her point of view. But um, the, the so-called independent, you know, journalists today, you know, operate from just, uh, you know, their homes, you know, the use of a laptop, phone, you know, and, and all that. And they use the social media platform to, to practice, 
so what qualifies one as a journalist you, you want to tell us um well um within the nigerian uh landscape a journalist is someone who is registered with the professional body uh, which is the nigerian union of journalists ordinarily but over time what happens outside nigeria also influences what happens in the country so if somebody is operating in ghana or Benin republic or canada and is writing something on nigeria the me the message on the news gets to nigeria so that talks about what is uh, you know properly referred to as uh, citizen journalism is also very powerful there are some journalists trained journalists who don't work in any media organization they know how to write news they know how to send news they have the contacts of major news organizations across the world and they send news to them and these news materials are published so a journalist is somebody who writes news gets the news across to the audience and through what means or what medium yeah but most of the uh, news materials that we read nowadays on the social media you know were not written by people sitting down in a particular media organization and the impact is very strong mm. so so, so, so the, the 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 bone of contention now is that um how do we make such persons to also practice journalism like i, I have said it is difficult to control such people mm. citizens uh, citizen journalists J just before you go to the control part I i'd like barbara again to you know you know speak more on the issue of who or what qualifies sure. a practitioner to be called a real journalist because most of the so-called propaganda fake news hate speech that we get to find today uh, actually written by people who claim to be journalists Absolutely. and some of them are affiliated absolutely it's true what uh, what do we define as journalism we define as journalism to, to, under two two aspects one is a methodology there is a methodology to collect analyze uh, check so verify and disseminate information and that's what journalists do is information that has a public that serves the public interest is information that is verified through two or more sources, uh, independent sources ideally, and, um, and is information uh, that is uh, relevant. So that is what defines the methodology, if you want, and is much more complex than this, and, and practicing journalists know that. Uh, the other is uh, our codes of ethics. I mean, every country, every newsroom, and it has a code of ethics. We, we know what the code of ethics of journalism is. So those who follow this type of codes, whether they work from their home and just post the information on social media because they don't have a better platform to use, but that information is nevertheless in the public interest, or whether they work for a big uh, company, a big news organization, this is what we define as quality journalism. Certainly, as you said, there are a lot of journalists who are affiliated with journalistic bodies, or in other ways, by means they define themselves and are defined by society as journalists, but the information they put out is, uh, looks more like propaganda than journalism, looks more like the Public relation is also a lot of journal. What is commonly understood as journalists is nothing else than public relations. Is serving the interests also of pub public, uh, sorry, private actors. So, um, and that's why we come back to the point of teaching our audiences uh, and the core function of a television 
like NTA or a public uh, body to teach the audiences to understand why is it the information that we are offering you or that uh, quality media is offering you more independent than something else. Okay, do, do, uh, I'm, I'm trying this question open. Do, do, you, do you take, uh, do, do, do we feel that digitization now, you know, of course, um, and the, the, the whole application of digital technology in, you know, journalism or in, in the med by the media, is it a danger to democracy? Is it a danger to development? But, I, but, but both of you will take the question as soon as we come back from this break. This is late edition and we're looking at fragmentation of the media space and, of course, uh, what we call good journalism. We'll be right back. The Nigerian Television Authority News 24 Channel, your dependable all-round news station, offering you world-class news programs, documentaries, spotlights, promos, and information highlights. Take advantage of our network reach and advertise your interest, goods, and services with us. NTA News 24, first among equals with digital broadcasting. You can reach us on Channel 21 Terrestrial TV and Channel 101 on the Star Times platform. For more inquiries, please call Coretta 0803-618-9986 or Henry on 0803-379-0884. Join us today. All right, welcome back. And I have uh, Barbara Tranfi, who is the Executive Director of International Press Institute. And of course, I have uh, Adewale Kupuluyi, who is also a member of the IPI. Again, I'd like to welcome you back to Late Edition. I was speaking on, you know, we, we, we're looking out at an aspect, of course, where uh, fragmentation of the media space whether it's a danger to development, is it a danger to world democracies? Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, whatever goes there is not uh, qualified to be, you know, termed as a uh, good journalism. Mm -hmm. So let me start from Adewale. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's um, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that. Um, you don't have to go through a lot of uh, bureaucracy before you get your news items published. That is one advantage. At uh, times, some journalists used to complain that when they send in their reports, the reports are never used. And at times, they are badly edited by their supervisors that uh, the, 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 the real message will have been distorted by the time the news comes out. So, but through the social media, you are sending the message as it is in a natural form. And not only that, people get the information very fast. So those are the advantages. But like I said, no demerits in the sense that most times people send information that are not true. Recently, a clergy was uh, portrayed as um, conversing for a politician not to be re-elected. Whereas, that event took place about three years ago. Mm. He was protesting against abortion, that abortion should not be encouraged. So he was carrying a placard. So the event took place three years ago, and the thing was uh, broadcast about uh, one week ago, saying that he was saying that people should not vote for a particular presidential aspirant in Nigeria. And security agents had to approach him to say, you, you said you are a clergyman, and are you being partisan? So what are we saying is that a lot of fake news, a lot of misrepresentations do occur from time to time. So that is just the problem. And uh, my, my, my fear now is that the dimension that we are having these negatives tend to be overriding the positive. So like Barbara said, we, it's a problem in journalism. How can we 
curtail the social media so that it will not be abused. So it's a mixture of uh, yes and no for me. Is social media bad for democracy? <laughs> Um, you mentioned fragmentation. Uh, we normally talk about algorithmic f fragmentation caused by social media. And that is, um, has, it seems there are still a lot of studies ongoing and, and, uh, and people analyzing this phenomenon have been expressing different opinions. But it seems that it does lead to fragmented societies, uh, to people living in the, um, in the perception that everybody else in society shares their view when in fact they're just living within their own bubble. And that is certainly bad because it's important that we keep the dialogue open within society. It's important that we keep the dialogue open with anybody who has a different point of view, a different opinion, because in that way it remains a dialogue. In the moment the fragmentation is too strong, it may become a conflict. And that's one, something we do not want. So on one hand, there is that aspect. On the other hand, however, technology, social media, has been an immense opportunity in countries mm. where uh, the entire news industry is in the hands of the state or of uh, business, um, business companies associated with the state in a way or another. So in that sense, social media has been re remained as the only platform where journalists, uh, you spoke about citizen journalists, journalists, no matter how you want to define them, but, but where quality journalistic information can be disseminated. I'm thinking about uh, certainly China, you mentioned before, but also Iran, uh, other countries in the, in the Middle East, in Northern Africa. So that has been an immense opportunity. Now, let me get back to the theme of the con Congress that you've just held, uh, good journalism and whether it matters. What, in, in your you know, understanding, consists of good journalism? Are, are there features? Are there recognizable elements? Um, yeah, indeed. Indeed, there are recognizable elements. Is, uh, is a journalist that can be independent from any type of external influence, from uh, pressures, either being uh, from uh, government, political forces, economic forces, or other type of biases, is a type of journalism that separates very well facts from opinions. Opinions are part of the news industry, but they must be clearly identified as such. And, and is the type of journalism that addresses the issues that are in the interest of our audiences, that are in the interest of the people in the country. Let's talk about those issues that really influence the life of uh, people living in our societies. Um, is the type of journalism that does not um, promote division in society, that does not instigate violence? Uh, rather the opposite is the one, the journalism that uh, leads audiences to understand that there are different points of views and they can and should live together in societies. So this is all what quality journalism is. Uh, what other features can you understand? As I said, I like look, if you look at any basic journalistic code of ethics, uh, the type of quality journalism is the journalism that follows that pattern. All right, thank you. But, uh, Wally, again, if you l l let me take you back to the 1999 Constitution. Of course, it stipulates you know, the obligation of the mass media. Now, without prejudice to section 39, subsections 1 and 2, which speaks on freedom of expression and, of course, ownership of the medium, how can you be a good journalist? How can we strike a balance between reporting the good and the bad without running foul of the law? Or of course, being uh, you know sensational. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, let me just say this: that uh, even though the constitution provides for um, freedom of um, expression and, and so on and so forth, I want you to also realize that uh, by virtue of uh, section six, those provisions are unjustifiable. Uh, and what that means is that uh, uh, the courts cannot hold anybody that is found not upholding that part of the constitution 
to account. That's what is meant by not being justiciable. Mm. So, uh, by virtue of that, um, it is difficult to enforce. Although, if any infringement borders on human rights abuses, then one can, you know, institute any action, uh, you know. But more importantly, I want to see the media uh, playing a critical role when it comes to good governance, which is more general now, uh, beyond the constitutional provision. Uh, because relying on what constitutes good governance, United Nations uh, has a list of indicators that we can use to measure good governance. Uh, part one of it is accountability, transparency. Uh, another one is rule of law, uh, political participation, and so on and so forth. One thing that is unique about media is that it's an institution that cuts across all those indicators. That is, for a country to attain all those indicators as stipulated by the United Nations, the role of media is critical. Accountability, the media ensures accountability by making sure that the go government is accountable okay, through investigative journalism, through agenda setting, the journalist keeps the government you know, on its own. When it comes to the rule of law, a lot of shortcomings, you know, are happening in, in our judicial system. It is the duty of the journalist to expose these things, to, you know, to review cases, to talk about human rights abuses, to, you know, ensure that all those actors, okay, that are responsible for ensuring the rule of law, Okay, perform the you know uh, the, 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 what they, they, they perform their the, their roles. So the media also ensures that. Then when talking about political participation, the media is also very strategic mm -hmm. to ensure that the citizens come out to exercise their civic responsibilities. That the electoral uh, bodies are also doing what they are expected to do. So the media is very critical, not only ensuring that the constitutional provisions are met, but to ensure that the, 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 the country okay, has a sustainable uh, good governance uh, uh, you know, template. Mm. Well, Barbara, the, the, the journalist, you know, has a responsibility to, you know, be, of course, accountable to the people, you know, of course, uh, with regards to government activities and all that. How possible is it for the good journalist, you know, the, 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 the professional journalist, to report objectively, you mm -hmm. know, without, again, you know, uh, 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 without uh, compromising the interests of the state? Uh, I think that rather the opposite. Any journalist uh, who reports objectively or fairly uh, will promote the interests of the state may not be promoting the interest of a particular political party, may not be promoting the interest of the government of the day, but it is promoting the interests of the state and of the people, because in the end... Where, where, where that interest, you know, runs uh, counter to government of the day's interest and is not to the interest of the stability of a country? In, I believe that... Um, we spoke about rule of law, we spoke about good governance, all of this is in the interest of the state because we know that rule of, gov um, rule of law will lead to greater stability. So this is what good journalism can contribute to. Um, political parties, possibly governments have other interests, they have the interest of being in power and staying in power and convincing their voters that their uh, actions are 
good and 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 they're worth of their their votes uh, so in that sense i think that there is a, a discrepancy between the interest of the state uh, and the interest of state has to be equal to the interest of the people and i do believe that uh quality journalism, even a journalist that exposes corruption, a journalism that exposes wrongdoings at any level of the state administration is nevertheless in the interest of the state as a body. Mm. Mm. All right, Eleron, you talked about, you, you gave me, of course, uh, your, your interpretation of what good journalism entails. I'd like to, you know, draw your attention to something. I, I was at a global media conference, you know, recently, and I was amazed you know, that, you know, at this time, someone, you know, can come out and describe a, a continent of over 54 countries where you have, you know, the largest economy, you know, as a country. Africa was actually described as a country. And that speaks to the kind of narratives, you know, that we get from some Western media yes. and, and, and all that. Now, do, do, what, what's your, what's, what do you have to say to that? Because some of the narratives coming from the Western media uh, have not really portrayed, you know, the qualities of a good, uh, you know, media reportage. I fully agree with you. I fully agree, and that has been a problem for many, many years. Africa is not properly covered uh, internationally. There is not enough knowledge about what is happening in, all, in Africa. There is not enough understanding about what is happening on, the, on this continent. And this was exactly one of the reasons for IPI to hold our World Congress in Nigeria. This is the country where the future begins. This is a country that the world should be looking at in order to ensure that 10 years from today we don't have you know, a global crisis. St stability in Nigeria is what will ensure that there won't be a migration crisis in Europe 10 years from today. So this is extremely important that all what is happening here is covered accurately and I am 100% in agreement with you that there isn't enough attention from the globe from many many uh, news organizations around the world in trying to understand the complexities of the political and social develop and economic developments in Nigeria. So what needs to change? Sorry what needs to change? Yes. More uh, foreign correspondents here, more better relationships with good between journalists in the West or around the world and good journalists uh, in Nigeria, those people who, you know, if something happens, let's say there is any, any type of news that would reach the West, typically it's, it's some type of attack. A journalist in a newsroom in Europe can pick up the phone, call their colleagues here and tell me, explain it to me a little bit. Tell me which are my sources to understand what does this mean? What, why, where does this come from? How can I tell my audiences what, why we are looking at this type of development. So this is the type of relationship that the Congress, like the one we just held, is looking at promoting. Mm. Now, b b back again to the, to the Congress. Do you think that it was very uh, instructive that the Congress was held at this point in time in Nigeria? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the Nobel laureate also, uh, Professor Walishi Inka also made that point that uh, the the congress was timely uh, especially now that nigeria is preparing for the general elections in uh, next year um, a lot of discussions uh, took place on elections how to cover elections properly and uh, uh, the role of uh, the journalists in this area is also very important um, a journalist, while working, must not be seen to be biased. Must, you know, carry out his or her obligations very well in a professional manner, and you must not, you must not succumb to intrigues of the politicians because this is the time that the politicians will be looking for uh, friends, journalist friends, who will. Um, uh, well, if it is to beam, you know, the, the searchlight into what they are doing or what they can offer objectively, that's fine. But to ensure that they are being overrated, okay, and to 
give their opponents uh, the impression that uh, they don't have much to offer. Uh, is uh, pure uh, blackmail. Now, now that you, you, you brought in the election, and one of the issues, I know Barbara kept you know, referring to this concern, safety. It's a major concern for journalists, especially those covering conflict-prone areas. D does IPI have any mechanism you know, to support journalists to cover you know, these conflict areas, especially as, as our election approaches? Yeah. Um, not only in the area of um, empowerment, like I said, the training uh, or series of discussions were held on how to, in conjunction with INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, it's courtesy of IPI, to ensure that Nigerian journalists are better trained and equipped for the task ahead of them. Uh, over years, over the years, IPI has always um, uh, been open to journalists across the globe uh, if there are specific needs. Okay, uh, for instance, journalists covering not only elections now, covering um, the North East because of uh, this issue of Boko Haram. Uh, terrorism and some other uh, crimes and criminalities going on in that area. They need special training um, instructions that will enable them to do their own work with minimum harm. The only thing that I think we need to also do is the issue of insurance uh, because uh, many journalists are facing a lot of uh, risks and unfortunately uh, it has been uh, uh, um, it has been found out that insurance cover for Nigerian journalists is still not uh, up to what it should be so uh, I think we still need to look into that uh, critically to ensure that uh, journalists do their work very well with minimal risks. So training is key. Insurance cover is also very key. Deborah, yep. Mm. On safety. Mm. What we have done um, just uh, two days ago is um, a meeting uh, of the what we consider the core stakeholders on the issue of safety. There will be a representative of the publishers' association, so the, the proprietors, the editors, the union. Uh, as well as other NGOs working uh, in the country for, new, for um, safety of journalists. Uh, as well, the, the uh, Minister Lai Mohammed was also present at this meeting and uh, experts from around the world around the issue of safety. Uh, safety is a, journalism safety is a complex issue and is one that has to be uh, taken care of by different parties within a country. The government has to play its role, or the state institutions, they have to play their role. Ultimately, it's their responsibility to ensure that journalists can operate safely. However, um, owners also have to ensure that journalists are insured, that they're properly trained, and they have funds, make the funds available towards that. The editors have to make sure that whenever they send a journalist on a dangerous assignment, they are picking the right journalist, that they are really making them aware of the type of j danger that they're going to face and how to get out in time. And the journalists themselves, they need to undergo training, as it was just mentioned. So we really believe that addressing safety of journalists is a holistic is, approach. Is, is, is that, sorry, sorry to interject. Is, is IPI taking up some of these training functions? So we have we don't do training directly, but we can uh, easily. We work with many other uh, partner organizations that offer training. Uh, at the meeting we had two days ago, there were some of those organizations there who said, you know, put together a group of journalists. We can send the trainers for free. So this this is an offer that uh, stands and has been uh, given to the, the core news association, a re representative of the journalists in the country. Um, but it's beyond, as I said, it's beyond training. Training is one element, that are, but there are many other elements to safety, and we are trying to look at all of them. Mm. I, I would not end this program without 
touch you know, on hate speech because this is, was also a major concern for Mr. President yeah. you know, when he delivered hate speech. He, he did appeal to the Congress you know, to ensure that uh, you know, the issues of hate speech and fake news you know, were addressed. Are, are there mechanisms for you know, taking up that challenge? On hate speech? Yes. Um, hate speech um, actually p as part of the training on election coverage there was also an element on the issue of hate speech because very often uh, hate speech does not originate within the journalistic community. Hate speech originates within the political community. It's very often is used by political leaders uh, to uh, convince their voters uh, toward a certain um, in, in, in a certain uh, in a certain agenda toward a certain agenda or in a certain direction. So the issue for journalists is mostly how can I cover this uh, statement by a political leader, which includes elements of hate speech, without repeating the hate speech, without promoting the hate speech. So how can I make my audiences aware of? The, 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 the type of language used by certain political leaders uh, and at the same time do not promote that type of rhetoric. Uh, so there is training available, IPI has manuals uh, on hate speech that we can certainly make available, they're online, we can make them available to the community. Uh, but it is an editorial mess uh, matter, it is a question of the editors who supervise the content that goes out to identify any possible hate speech. Uh, Mr. Wally, uh, briefly on, on the issue of uh, fake news. Of course, uh, I'm sure we've all had experience, you know, one experience or the other, you know, with fake news. But how do we begin to deal with it? Some countries have attempted legislation, but we hear legislation, it's not, it's not it. So if legislation is not it, what is it? Well, fake news, um uh, some people could embark on uh, dealing with uh, fake news for commercial purposes. I once, uh, I was once told of a person who deliberately sent out information to create panic and uh, to attract uh, traffic to his website. So, you know, fake news can be a creation of somebody to uh, make some uh, unnecessary attention or draw some uh, attention. Yes, yeah, so yeah. how do we address it yeah. as journalists? How, how do we address it? It is the individual. That is one. There must be that uh, orientation that this is not right. That is one. Number two, human beings, naturally, we have the tendency to just go astray. So the legislation has to be strengthened. And we have a lot of laws in this country that can deal with that. So it's just a matter of enforcement. All right. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to thank you. I'd also like to thank Barbara Trumfi, of course, Executive Director, International Press Institute, IPI. I hope you both had a wonderful time you know, uh, at the Congress. Thank you for joining me in the edition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and that's our late edition for this week. We've looked at fragmentation of the media space and, of course, the place of good journalism. We'll be back next week. Bye-bye.